look at that. It's a super hot day here in Germany. We're having like a 30 something degrees Celsius and uh, the big problem is German houses don't have air conditioning. So in my room it's absolutely cooking at the moment. So I uh, decided to go over into the other house which uh, as you can see I have all the blinds, all the shutters down and all the windows closed up so that no sun can get in and with these uh, at least somewhat massive stone walls it's actually pretty comfortable in here but uh, also pretty dark <laughs> anyway uh, today I have a bit of a project here on Dr. Cassette's workshop look at that this TV has been hiding behind there for, well, I'd say almost a year now, and uh, never did something with it. It is broken. So let's get it out of there and take it apart. Well, I now have all the screws taken out. It's, uh, you know, I shut off the camera because it's not too terribly exciting to watch somebody taking out screws. Anyway, we have a look at the uh, connection panel. Two SCART jacks, that's all. You can somehow also put super video signals to, through those. There is an option in the menu for that. There is the optional satellite receiver thing over there, which uh, I think that was an additional two to three hundred mark back then. TV itself cost like a thousand five hundred mark, so this really wasn't cheap. That's the regular analog TV input. There are options for an audio output and a speaker output, but as you can see, that's not uh, that's not installed. Anyway. Uh, I think I got all the screws out of there, so uh, I guess we can now attempt to pull the top cover off of there and uh, you know, see what happens, see what's going on inside of there. Oh, that was very easy. Okay. Uh, yes. And we have signs of, uh, <laughs> signs of the times back then. The picture tube was made by Philips. Of course, uh, Grundig was a part of Philips back then. Okay, have the camera set up in a bit of a better spot, so hopefully you can see what we're doing. Well, I don't have a terrible lot of experience with uh, taking apart televisions. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I'm really taking apart a television. I mean, we had a look inside of that cheap ITT big screen TV a couple of years ago, but, um, you know, out of that I just uh, took the speakers and... Uh, I think that was it. With this one I want to go a little further. I want to see if there are any more useful parts like on that circuit board. So, uh, and by the way, no stupid comments about my shoes. These are garden shoes and yes, they are green and I don't think that's that's anything uh, anybody could laugh about. All right, so um, it uh, it is safe to mess around with this. It, uh, as I said, it has not been turned on, has not been plugged in for more, uh, not more, but almost a year, so uh, all the capacitors should be discharged pretty well. And since the picture tube can charge up, and since the, uh, I think the flyback transformer can charge up in some kind of way too, the first thing I want to do is, uh, I hope these wire cutters are uh, just as insulated as they look. <laughs> I want to go ahead and clip the wires, I want to clip them, since uh, I have no intentions on using the flyback transformer or anything like that, it, uh, the only thing that does is scaring me, so uh, I want to clip the wires right there, okay, and okay, and I want to clip the wire on the picture tube, so, okay, that should be all pretty safe. Clip that wire too, kind of unnecessary, but oh well. Okay, next along. Oh dear, I wish I had some insulating gloves. I'm not, uh, I'm not completely, uh, not completely sure about what I'm doing here. 
Okay. Well, that was easy. Pulled off that part. And uh, can't find the, uh, the box in which I put all my, uh, all my drill bits. Oh, that screwdriver actually fits. That's nice. I can't find that box. That's the problem with uh, when you're tidying up things and uh, clean up everything. If you have everything nicely organized in one spot and if you forget about that spot, you can't find anything at all. So uh, having a messy workshop can be an advantage sometimes. Okay, now two screws and uh, now this uh, whole chassis should slide out in kind of a uh, kind of a drawer style and it does okay we'll go ahead and uh, take that off and well, I guess it really doesn't matter anymore doesn't it take uh, take that off take that off and that and that and that Oop, that doesn't want to come off. Well, that's, uh, that's a grounding cable. Okay, here we have the chassis. I just want to put down there. I guess we'll have to blow that out with a compressor before I can uh, do anything else with it, because it's, uh, it's pretty filthy. Uh, if you can... Uh, there it is. Here we have a very exciting look into the chassis. This is our picture tube with its connections. This uh, down there, as you can see, they made kind of a last-minute decision to use uh, some uh, cheap wire wrap terminals instead of a proper plug, which is kind of weird. The speakers are sitting down there, and uh, I was actually expecting to find uh, some sort of a little subwoofer unit in this, because uh, the TV always sounded very good, very, very good bass response, so kind of a surprise that there are just these uh, two speakers in there. Anyway, I want to try to get them out of there, and um, since that's once again mostly a matter of taking out screws, don't want to bore you with that. And there we have the television all back together, minus a few parts. <laughs> now anyway, very unfortunately, the speakers are uh, gone. As you can see, the foam surrounds are just uh, falling apart. And uh, I do have a date code on the back side, 95, 1095-4, so probably means that they were made in 1995. And here we have the chassis on the workbench, and I already went ahead and uh, took it outside, blew it out with a compressor, because this was extremely dusty, and still is, but it's of course a lot better. So uh, anyway, to be honest with you, at the moment this is uh, kind of disappointing because uh, I was expecting uh, to find a lot more usable parts, you know, like, uh, what should I say, you know, heat sinks and power transistors and, you know, but uh, so far I'm not seeing all too much of that. So, uh, well, I don't know. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, continue taking this apart. Hopefully I'm not shocking myself with uh, anything. This is that board that sat on the CRT with uh, a plug right there. Don't think that's usable. There is a chip. I'm going to look up the data sheet of that and see if that is useful for, uh, for something. Just want to unplug that and unplug that. On this one they did not went for any cheap, uh, cheap stuff. Moving on, I just want to get all these extension cards out and then I'm going to shut off the camera and desolder all the useless parts and... Uh, <laughs> not the useless parts, all the useful parts. And, uh, you know, then I'm going to uh, show you the final result. But uh, this is kind of interesting. It does have, uh, kind of like in a computer, have uh, all this uh, stuff for uh, extension cards. Although on a computer it's definitely a lot more easy to uh, to take them out. This is uh, kind of a mess, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. There is our expensive satellite receiver card. And uh, there is another. 
another connection there. You know, th these are card edge connected circuit boards. So why did they still have to put all those cables? Kind of weird. Anyway, this thing comes off and we can now go ahead and look how flimsy that back part is. This is rubbish. Anyway, now probably go ahead and take out this uh, tuner card. Oh, there we go. Just have to force it a little bit. And there it is. Oh, you can't see it. And there it is. Some shielded boxes on there. Antenna connector. And, uh, oh, it's really not much. I wonder how they did it with, uh, with the firmware of the television. If that's somehow, you know, the menu and everything, if that's implemented into here, or if there is a uh, jumper setting in the TV, I don't know. I'm not seeing anything uh, where you could set a lot of jumpers. So, uh, it does have a bunch of integrated circuits on the back, so I guess that's where that is coming from. Okay, moving on, we have the next board, which, um, does not seem to be an optional board. Let's see. Uh, external. Oh, it. Well, it might actually be an external board. This is for your video inputs. Your external video inputs. That uh, that must have been a really cheap TV that uh, didn't have any external inputs, especially in the mid '90s does have some chips on there, just a single layer circuit board. So, uh, oh, let's uh, put that to the side. And here goes the last expansion, which, uh, okay, with a little bit of force you can get everything to come out. Okay, now this, this I'm very sure was uh, not an optional accessory. This is the uh, color decoder card. So uh, in a black and white television you could leave that out, but uh, I really don't think those were still available in the uh, mid-90s. There it is. Another chip, TDA. Seems to have all Philips chips, which is um, only logical, of course. This was apparently made by Philips. But uh, there is that. This is a dual-layer circuit board. It has some miniature SMD components on the other side. And, uh, oh, here is another card. Let's take that out. This is our IF amplifier. Not sure why uh, you would want to take that out. Why do you want to be able to do that? Because, uh, that is definitely not an optional thing. But, uh, all right. So you can see, once you have all those expansion cards removed, there is really not much left. There is uh, this box right here over an integrated circuit. This could be, this does have the, uh, the speaker connectors right next to it. So uh, this with this uh, on, on, mounted on this weird copper heat sink, which is already completely bent. This could very well be the audio amplifier chip. And over here, of course, we have the high voltage section with uh, all the parts for that. And uh, to be honest, I can't really say too much about that. And I don't think I'll be, uh, I'll be messing around with that too much either. Uh, we do have the flyback transformer there, which, uh, which actually does still say Grundig on it. I have another... Uh, well, I, I don't think that's a transformer. It might be a choke of some sort. Coils might be useful for building radios if I'm ever building, if I should ever be building radios again. And, uh, oh, okay, we do have, on this uh, divider thingy, we do have uh, some more uh, integrated circuits on this side right here. Okay, now up in front, right there, we have all the, uh, all the controls, all the operating controls. Power switch. And uh, up and down buttons, that kind of stuff, video inputs. Now, it is a single layer circuit board. Okay, they actually tell you this part right here 
is the high voltage part with uh, no no division, no no divider, nothing keeping you away from the mains. So uh, anyway, I don't think that matters anymore. As I said, I'm pretty sure everything dis has discharged by now. So, I now want to go ahead and take it all apart, and uh, then we're going to see uh, what kind of uh, useful parts I can get out of this. So, uh, stay tuned. And here we are, around about two hours later, and as you can see, I have a nice bowl of components that I can use. You know, pastors and... Uh, Unfortunately, only those uh, cheapo heat sinks, no real things. Power jack, video input jacks. I, I even went ahead and took out the flyback transformer. But some of these uh, capacitors, these are looking somewhat interesting, as you can see. And, uh, well, high wattage resistors. Here we have a uh, cup of... Uh, cup of uh, semiconductors, well, do have diodes in there, but um, some integrated circuits. We do have, uh, well, I guess this would have been your uh, program memory, and uh, this is a blurry image. I guess we're, it won't get any better, so let's just move on. Have uh, quite a few chips, and uh, also these uh, these little insulating sheets. Uh, this one right there is actually a, uh, I think that's a power MOSFET. Uh, it's one of those uh, BU types. I also pulled out the chip for the power amplifier. That should, uh, that should be a pretty good one. I also got my favorite, an LM317. <laughs> so uh, I guess we can soon go ahead and build some more power supplies just in case you're not bored with that already. Anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, take this with me and uh, look up the specifications and the data sheets and see if any of these chips are, uh, uh, are very interesting for something. So, uh, and here we have uh, the remains circuit boards, of course looking quite a bit more empty. I didn't touch the uh, satellite receiver, that might be useful for something at some point. But, uh, there you have it. Those are going to go into my box of junk circuit boards, because there are still some components on there that I'm just not feeling uh, like taking off. But, you know, in case I, uh, I really need something, I'm sometimes digging through that box, and sometimes I'm even finding something. And those circuit boards are all empty, and they're going to go into the chunk. And see, I, I was even so crazy, unsoldered one of these uh, IC sockets from uh, the circuit boards. Well, anyway, that's it. So, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video about uh, taking apart the Grundig Greenville 70 television. There it is. And it won't be there for much longer.